Hello, my name is Hector Hinojosa. I am with uh, Cordillera Geoservices. Cordillera Geoservices offers both uh, geophysical uh, professional services and geological uh, services. And today we are at the Galt Archaeological Site, a very important site in uh, Nat Native American uh, archaeology uh, for North America. And the site behind me is uh, Area 15 and it's marked by uh, these four uh, white poles and the excavation goes down to uh, between three to four meters. And today we are going to use electrical resistivity imaging in two dimensions to map uh, the presence of uh, channel deposits uh, that are, have been deposited uh, due to a, uh, ice, um, a stream that has moved back and forth uh, in the past uh, 20 to 25,000 uh, years. really excited about helping the uh, Gold Archaeological Site crew because this is a very important Native American site in North America and is known worldwide and being part of this process of creating knowledge is exciting it gets me really really excited and the thing about this is that I I live about 45 minutes from here so I could say that this is my backyard so here at the gold archaeological site which is located uh, between uh, Georgetown and Austin Texas uh, we are sitting in a site that is about 20,000 uh, years old and is one of the oldest sites in North America. And I am uh, trying to add more information uh, about the uh, sedimentological processes that happen at the site with the use of geophysical uh, techniques. Uh, today, this one is uh, 2D electrical resistivity uh, imaging. And Dr. Clark uh, Wernicke uh, is uh, very well known and is going to uh, give us a very brief uh, description of the site. Well, as you said, it's uh, at least 20,000 years old. We have 22 archeological cultures you can find in Central Texas on an archeological site, and we have all 22. Uh, we have a really large amount of uh, material artifacts from the Clovis culture, which is the oldest named culture in North America. It's 12,700 to 13,500 years old. But we have artifacts that predate that below that at the site, which currently don't have a name. But we also found the earliest art in the Americas here, one of only 17 mammoth kill sites known in North America. We have the oldest excavated house in North America on this site. So it's been one surprise after another. So here at the Galt Archaeological Site, the uh, geomorphologists and the archaeologists are interested in finding evidence of uh, ancient uh, stream channel deposits. 
and they need to find them uh, close to, to the excavation that they have done. So we de delineated the locations where we need subsurface imaging or information. And the uh, locations are pretty much marked by these um, flags. We have four profiles. This is one of the profiles. Uh, the other three profiles run more or less uh, in different directions. And the interesting thing about this is that we need information between the excavation, which is about three to four meters deep, that uh, found uh, limestone bedrock. <clears throat> so we need information between the excavation and the, uh, the stream that is uh, running uh, in this direction. So we try to understand the uh, sedimentological uh, history that uh, is the result of the position of uh, clastic sediments between, between the excavation and the stream. And uh, this is one of the profiles that uh, we are showing you uh, today. And this specific type of method is called electrical resistivity and it's, uh, it consists of uh, transmitter and receivers. The uh, receivers are uh, centralized in, 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 a, in a box and the uh, transmitter injects electrical current into the ground through these stainless steel takeouts and, 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 and stakes and together both the takeout and the stake makes up the uh, the electrode and for this particular uh, uh, array we have uh, 56 uh, electrodes and these electrodes are spaced half a meter 50 centimeters apart and that's because we want high resolution within the first three to four meters of of the of the surface and this makes it a high resolution uh, to the electrical resistivity imaging survey. So for every job I do, I like to do three tests before the actual measurement begins. The first test is the receiver test, the second test is the relay test, and the third test is the uh, contact resistance test. If these three tests pass, um, I have a good chance of getting uh, good and high quality data. And this is, this is the instrument that is going to uh, produce what we call a uh, electrical resistivity uh, model of the subsurface. And electrical resistivity is um, going to provide you uh, an image of the subsurface. And this image will be uh, shown in colors. And the colors mean different resistivity values in units of ohms uh, meter. And depending on the distribution of the resistivity and, and the, the ranges of their values, we can infer if uh, we have archaeological targets or uh, bedrock or stratigraphic changes within, within the soil column. So in essence, we're getting a scan of the subsurface along this uh, 38, approximately, uh, 38 meter long uh, profile within uh, an up to four meter depth uh, range and is a high resolution uh, resistivity imaging because the electro spacing is half a meter. The known stratigraphy at the Gold Archaeological Site is well known. It is composed of mainly silty soils with some clays and a basal gravel deposit. That Holocene age sequence of uh, floodplain deposits is deposited over an unconformity which separates it from the local limestone bedrock. The bedrock is water saturated, it is highly weathered and has a wavy topography and is of Cretaceous age. So based on the known local stratigraphy, we can easily interpret the resistivity results. Here I show you the results of the first profile that we collected. Uh, it is profile gas L1, 
and we used a combination of the dipole-dipole, strong gradient, and reverse Schlumberger array. We see basically three anomalies. A low resistivity anomaly in chase of blue, an intermediate resistivity, which is the background resistivity in chase of green, and the high resistivity anomalies that we see at the bottom, which are chase of red and orange. The low resistivity anomaly is in this along this profile is interpreted as a lens of uh, clay rich uh, deposits. And the high resistivity anomalies on either side of the blue anomaly represent the highly weather water saturated limestone bedrock, which again shows that it has a very prominent wavy topography. The low resistivity anomaly is within uh, half ohm meters to about 7 to 10 ohm meters, whereas the high resistivity anomaly has uh, resistivity values higher than 170 ohm meters, all the way up to almost 1,200 ohm meters. So we can clearly see that the Holocene age soil column is uh, about 3.5 to up to 4.5 meters thick along this profile. <laughs>